Warning, the views and opinions expressed in the following video are solely those of the individuals providing them. Hi, and welcome to Cappy's Neighborhood Pub, where we talk about everything to do with camping, overlanding, adventure, news, and gear. Once in a while, we'll have guests stop by and we'll chat and we'll even sample some frosty adult beverages. All right, we can't start off the evening without a cold brew. So tonight's cold brew is going to be the Windstorm, which is a West Coast Pale Ale from the Stanley Park Brewing Company in Vancouver, British Columbia. So this brew says that it's got tropical fruit and citrus hop character, medium body, full color. It's hoppy for sure. Yeah, there's the fruit. That's good. Gotta be really cold though. This one has been sitting out a little bit, so. Oh well, cheers. Every week I get questions related to the same subject. So instead of answering back to you directly in a private message, I thought, hey, what a great way to answer it here. So the most popular question that we get asked all the time is, you built a trailer a couple years ago and lately you've been doing your long travel without the trailer. It's happening with the trailer and will you ever pull a trailer again? That's a really good question. And I'm gonna get Tracy in here to help us answer that question together. Tight sweatpants on. I <laughs> can't see below. <laughs> it's hot, we'll just yeah. wear underwear. Yeah, yeah. We could be in our underwear if we wanted to. No one would know. Exactly. Yeah. It might be weird. Do no. you want it to taste? Not really. No. Beer's not Smell my it. Name. Smells pretty good. Yeah. So anyway, Tracy, a lot of people are asking us why we don't pull a trailer anymore. And I thought, well, that'd be a good time to answer that question. Because you and I experienced a couple of good trips without the trailer. And it just gave us uh, an opportunity to, I think, explore more and just be able to uh, be able to check things out uh, a little bit easier. So one of the key reasons why I was more of the one that pushed to not have the trailer is as we were touring through Washington a year and a bit ago after the Northwest Overlanding Rally, um, there were some really neat little towns, little places that we could just stop in and check out the, the local sites. So the cafes, the little breweries, the whatever it's in, in around um, that part of the area that we're touring. So the challenge was, is we couldn't find anywhere to park when you're pulling a trailer. So the towns were busy, it was tourist season, and we actually had to bypass a few towns because the parking would be at the Safeway store that was like two miles out of the town or at the edge of town and you had to walk all the way back in, which is fine, I love to go out walking. But when you're with a group of people and there's multiple trailers, it just kind of created a bigger hiccup for us. And so there were a lot of locations that I really wanted to go on tour and see, but never had a chance to. So we figured that with our children being grown, um, our youngest is gonna be 18 this fall, graduated high school. We had more opportunities to go a little bit further, long, that's gonna sound funny, further longer. <laughs> but, um, but to see more sites with less hassle, less packing, whatever, just the two of us, we can pack light, smaller amounts of food, smaller amounts of clothing, we're not packing for an extra child. Um, and that way it made it more where we could, I don't know how you'd want to say it, just where we could stop wherever we wanted to. Just, you know what, yeah. hey, let's pull over right here. Even if we're on the side of a highway or we want to go check a different roadway uh, or a different pathway route, it just, to me, it was like an inconvenience to try and figure out how to back up a trailer, move it around, stop in here, trying to find somewhere to park. And um, this way, we could just go and we're like, hey, there's a parking spot. Let's take it. Let's go and see this little cafe. Let's go check this little shop out. Let's go and try this brewery. It's, we've been driving for six hours. We want to have a break. Um, that was kind of our main motivator. We don't need to haul extra chairs, extra food, extra yeah. equipment. We can put it all in the Jeep and go. So that um, was one of, our, one of the key factors that 
I push towards. It's extra gas. It's extra everything to pull a trailer. Well, especially like when we did that trip on the island last year. That was Just amazing. The, that was, yeah, it was amazing. We decided at that point that we were going to retrofit the Jeep to put the rooftop tent on the Jeep. And because first of all, the ferry prices to get across onto the island was just ridiculous. And when you pull a trailer, you're adding the cost of another vehicle. Extra length, One yes. thing, long travel. So pulling a trailer and the fuel, like we just yeah. went through, we went through, in the past, we went through so much fuel just because of the trailer was so much heavier than what we're used to. And even when you're on the island and you've got some tight roads, tight highways, you don't have a shoulder to pull over. We saw a nice little hiking trail that led you to a waterfall. Trying to find a place to park, pulling that trailer would have been a pain in the butt. So we opted to just go without a trailer on that trip. And to us, it just opened up a whole awesome. new, yeah, it just opened up a yeah. whole new opportunity to go exploring when there's tighter sections. Now I know there are some pros where you can set up camp, leave your trailer there, and it's very convenient to just leave camp set up and you can take off in your vehicle and go exploring. I get that. But in the long run, we saw that if we can retrofit the Jeep to be our overland all the time rig, mm -hmm. it just made it a lot more convenient, right? Well, and even just the back end, we were in some spots on Vancouver Island that we were so enclosed in it, we had to back our way out of it. and. Well, how would we have done that with a trailer? Oh, we had some trails that just led to a dead end and there was no tear, like teardrop no, turnaround. No it was the end of a trail, overgrown. How do you turn it exactly? How do you turn around in that? It would have to be unhitch, pull it aside, turn the trailer by hand, get the vehicle turned around and hook up again and, and just get out of there. It was, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not a, an ideal no, situation, no. depending on what kind of overlanding you want to do. Yeah. We do love the fact that, I mean, there's a lot of people that love their trailers and that's great. If we were going to go somewhere and we were going to sit for three or four days, that's great. You can set up a big awning, you can set up an extra room or whatever. That's fine. That's not really, that's great if we're just going to go do some weekend camping. When we want to do our long trips, I don't want to be setting all that up every single night. You want to cover as much ground as you can and to set that up and take it down and set it up and take it down. It's, it was time consuming and you're, you're actually less time on the road, less time touring everywhere else, less time hi or hiking yep. because you're setting all this up. You're taking it all down. And when it rains, we experience every kind of weather. So um, we're, not, we're not saying that we will never do a trailer or utility trailer again. We actually moving into another phase of life where we, our kids are grown, yeah. we might have grandchildren in the next five to 10 years. So that's a whole nother world. So that's- That'll be the next chapter in our life because we, yes. we want to we bring our grandchildren with us camping and on trips. We're going to need to pull a either extra like launchers, a extra yeah, bedding, gear, extra food, extra water. Extra so clothing. we're going to need a utility trailer, an off-road utility trailer, probably with a secondary rooftop tent on it for the grandkids. But we're not there yet. So we're enjoying our life with the Jeep that it is right now. And we built it to suit our needs. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. So one of the things, now you know the Land Rover Defender. A little bit. You've seen pictures of the yeah. old style, the classic icon look, the two door, the four door. We're planning possibly a trip to Scotland next year. And we want to tour possibly. the- uh, No. At least someone's going. <laughs> okay, we're going to Scotland next year. Somebody so, has a big birthday next year. <laughs> yeah, big 5 0 next year. All right. <laughs> she looks great. Half a century, I'm good with it. Yeah. So, we want to tour Scotland next year, and we're looking at some possibilities of things to do either Airbnbs or possibly even rent a Land Rover camper style that we can go and explore the entire island on our own. Now, You've know, everybody knows that they've just released the Land Rover Defender, the new. So a couple years ago, they stopped making production of the current Land Rover uh, Defender series. Everybody knew something new and a new look was going to come out. And it just got revealed. And it's getting some mixed reviews. And I'm going to show you what you're used to seeing as a big, bulky, big square, iconic, rugged, Mm -hmm. Overland rig because it's versatile. It's known around the world. Everybody knows, and it's a favorite of mine. If I had the money, I would buy a classic Land Rover Defender. So Land Rover, a couple of weeks ago, released a video on YouTube, and I just watched it today, and 
You know, I'm gonna give my feedback afterwards, but I wanna get her reaction on this new Defender. You go above and beyond. You capture its very essence. Then, you reimagine it. You design, engineer, and build it without compromise. Mm. I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> You're making it look like the Range Rover a bit in the front. Yeah. Yeah, no. Nope. There's a bit of crossover, but... No, I don't like the back. Yeah, I'm struggling with it. They're trying to make it look too... Mall crawler-like? <laughs> they're trying to make it look too, not, I don't say classy, like yuppie. I don't even know how to word it. It's not rugged looking. It's, yep, I would not buy it. There you go. So even if I had the money, sorry, let me re re rewind. Um, even if I had all kinds of money, that's not a vehicle I would buy. Cause I, but that's just how everyone's got different tastes. We all yeah. like a certain look about a vehicle. Yeah. I'm not. No? Feeling yeah. at all. So, a lot of feedback on, I mean, I reviewed the full specs of this Land Rover, and there are gonna be a lot of great benefits to owning the new Defender. But you gotta remember that the classic Defender was used for multiple applications. They had so many different parts you could just buy and bolt on. This new Defender, you're gonna have to send it back to the dealership just to get anything done to it. You, you could not modify this thing on your own. And unless I'm wrong and they're gonna come up with a lot of uh, aftermarket parts, but that, it's... It's well, almost like Lincoln-like or it's trying to, you know, it's, it's trying to go to the, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like it's something that you wouldn't take out overlining because it's it's too pretty. <laughs> but, it's, <laughs> but it's not even pretty. But like the it, thing is, I though, don't know. I don't the know the either. classic uh, Defender was was why. very bulky. Like it was not known for the most comfortable ride to sit. In. It's like oh, sitting okay. in a in a school bus seat is what some of it classified as. Oh, so, right. but the versatility of the old uh, Defender, just the things that it was known for doing. This is gonna, now there are some uh, other issues about this is that the, the wheelbase, like just the size of the wheels, is gonna be 18 inch to 20 inch. Well, why does it look so, like that? And it can only fit like 33 inch tires on there. So when you're looking at airing down, for example, you're gonna run into some issues where you've only got, you'll be considered to have like a, a low profile tire yeah. because of that size of that rim. Uh, but they have a different uh, version where you can actually air lift the, the, the vehicle for more off-road capabilities. Uh, whether or not they change to get like a 17 inch or a 16 inch wheel, I don't know. Well, I mean, the, the video show that it's in the snow and it's doing everything that most off-road vehicles can do. So anyway, I love to hear, or I like to see your comments down below, what your thoughts are of the new Land Rover Defender that they just released. Yeah, yeah. I think that helps me get loosey goosey. Yeah, did you mean to guzzle it? <laughs> no. Chuck it? No. Maybe you should. Yeah. So once in a while we uh, we get some gear that we like to use either camping, hiking, backpacking, climbing, whatever it may be. And sometimes gear is given to me to review on, and some of it I pay out of my own pocket. So one of the items that I I saw uh, and I knew that I needed it because the current product I was using was failing. I mean, I purchased uh, three of this item and I'll show you what that is. So one of the items that I went and purchased is the uh, GARB bag by Northbound Expeditions. GARB stands for uh, Garbage and Recycling Bag. Now, this bag was more expensive than the Trasheru bag, but the Trasheru, I bought three because it didn't last long. Uh, it weathered, it ripped, the zippers busted every single time on that flap on the front. It would never close, it'd pull apart, yeah. uh, it, and the buckles, the uh, snaps weren't strong enough. 
it wasn't adequate. So the boys over at Northbound Expeditions, they designed their own uh, recycling and garbage bag and they called it the garb. This thing is amazing. I mean, it is double stitched. It is strong. The zippers are heavy duty military grade zippers. The way that this attaches to the tire is strong and it's durable. It will not come apart. Uh, and it's got multiple pockets, side pocket here, front pocket here for tools, a deeper pocket here. You got a mesh pocket on the side. You know, you put your, uh, your spent um, propane bottle on the side here. Or garbage we just find up lying around left from other people, we just throw it in there because Real quickly. we open everything up again. And Let's See, that's one of the responsible things that we do too is that on the trails, if I see a piece of garbage or a beer can sitting there, I will pull over Instead of opening the whole bag, I'll quickly put it in the side mesh and I'll deal with it later. So it's kind of a, a neat system to, to have here. Inside, you can it's got extra straps, so if you needed to tie off some extra firewood, uh, you're available to. And it's a nice deep bag and it's got a nice little loops here. You can hook, you know, I've got carabiner here on the side. You can hook multiple things. So. This is an amazing bag, and I want to say thank you to the boys over at Northbound Expeditions for, for making a nice, strong, durable bag. Uh, I can be on the trail with full confidence knowing that this thing is not going to rip off, it's not going to break off, it's not going to tear. Uh, but during the week, though, I take it off my Jeep and I store it inside the garage because, you know, at the price I paid, I just don't want it to go uh, missing and grow some legs and walk away. So good job guys, uh, I really support these guys. And they also have a chainsaw bag that can attach to your rear tire also. It's got some cool straps and they're working on some future products. So check them out online at northboundexpeditions.com. Everybody loves Instagram. Uh, you know, some of us are addicted to it. We love watching it, we love posting into it. And you know, there are people out there saying, you know, it's all about the gram. And people will go out there camping and overlanding and they just take lots of photos. My opinion on that is, who cares? They're out there and they're exploring and they're having fun. So let them have their fun in their own way. So when we pull up our phones and we look up with Instagram and see what's going on, I got this video that I saw and it just kind of intrigued me a little bit. And I was wondering if it was uh, real or fake. So I'm going to show this to Tracy and see what she thinks about this. Yeah. Uh gonna go with fake because that would have long tipped right over unless they somehow camera tricked it a bit so my first thought was it was an RC truck like an RC remote control vehicle that they well, drove on the side thing. well I, I searched it like I was looking and I can't see if there's a driver in there or it just looked too yeah, fake. Yeah, on a cliff like that I know that tire would have slipped he would have been gone but the way that the 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 Jeep is moving, to me it's real. It just, at first it looked like an RC car, but it's not. <laughs> and I'm showing that right uh, now to you. It's, it's on the video right here. Uh, give impressive. me your thoughts on that. Like, <laughs> that's pretty gnarly, but that's really sketchy. So I was kind of wondering if that was going to be yeah. a, a real thing or a fake. And somebody who doesn't value their life. Well, I, who knows how, how far that's dropping off, but you're yeah, right. But still, you're going to run your... So this one here came from uh, M Pora Official, is the uh, Instagram account, and they're a uh, adventure magazine in the UK. And I'm interested if this is real or fake. Put your comments down. What do you think about that? Thanks for stopping by Cappy's Neighborhood Pub. And if you don't feel like stopping by, that's okay too. And on your way out, please make sure to tip that subscribe button, and please don't forget to click on that notification bell. Whatever your thirst is for adventure, please remember to just get out there and explore. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, there you go. This is my imaginary <laughs> drink. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> blinky, blinky. It's blinking on the right. All right, blinky. Once in a while, we'll have good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna make this really long. <laughs> no, no, you're fine there. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you keep laughing, it's gonna be really long. God, I hope that was recording the whole time. <laughs>
Did we push start? You did. Oh, it's still flashing. Okay. Is this thing on? 